You know, I rarely pick up big ticket games these days. If it's over 30 bucks, I'm probably just going to wait, with rare exceptions for games I've really been waiting for. But every once in a while, Steam puts a more costly game at just the right price for me. And that's why today I'll be doing a quick review of A Plague Tale Innocence. A Plague Tale Innocence is the story of a young girl named Amicia Derune, who must protect her MacGuffin named Hugo. Uh, sorry, I mean her brother named Hugo. From the Inquisition who slaughtered her family to steal him away. The Inquisition planned to use her MacGuffin, I mean her brother, to do something evil. I won't say what because that would be spoilers, but suffice to say Hugo is very important to their plans. While running away from the Inquisition, we find our young heroes dodging crazies who are freaked out because of the terrible plague. We get some foreshadowing in the form of people being bitten at night, being the cause of the plague. Started with bites during the night, then the sickness spread, first in families, then to everyone. Then the big reveal shows us the secondary threat. Rats! Hordes and hordes of rats! A great rat hive, if you will. Or something like that. We learn pretty early on that the rats are making flesh tunnels, or some sort of flesh hive goop. I I'm not exactly sure. It's never fully explained. We do learn a little bit more about it later, but that's spoilers, so I'm not going to go into it. Talking mechanically, you gotta manage your whiny little shit of a MacGuffin while sneaking past people and managing the rat hordes. The game is basically a series of puzzles, flipping between sneaking puzzles and rat puzzles and sometimes both. And while it's pretty simple, I find it massively enjoyable. Often, I find the difference between boring repetition and fun gameplay to really have two main factors. How well you change up the way you apply the same mechanics each time, and how well designed those mechanics are to begin with. And A Plague Tale Innocence does both of these excellently. Waiting for MacGuffin to come down the ladder can sometimes be annoying, but other than that, I found it all to be smooth, well designed, and excellently executed. Using the sling and the different ammos to solve different situations was a lot of fun and felt very refined. The way the game eased you into new ammo or mechanics was really well done, where by the time you had to just know what to do without being prompted, you'd figure it out without even thinking. It was like second nature. It's a method of teaching mechanics I greatly prefer over tutorials, and I commend the developers for doing it. It shows real skill. I also enjoy how the party started to grow as the game goes on. Having new characters join you and how seamlessly they integrate into the game's mechanics was cool and made the game feel like it was progressing while not removing any of the panic or the stress from the rats or the bad guys. The AI allies also work really well and pathed intelligently, save for the one time Lucas straight up suicided into some rats, but I'll chalk that up to a one-off glitch. They felt like real companions and not just annoying tagalongs that existed for plot purposes. Something that I also found fantastic was how you get a bigger picture of the world by listening to the conversations from NPCs, including the bad guys. What a waste of time. The Grand Inquisitor should just tell us what he really wants from us. Often the story gets expanded on by you simply listening to the guards you're sneaking past, and you'll get an idea for even the tone of the situation by how they react to each other, such as what the Inquisition is doing or who the people are that you're sneaking past. I know you're tired. I know there's not enough of us. And I definitely know we'd all like to get far, far away from these fucking rats. It's a great way to do storytelling, and it really draws me in. The visuals of the game are very well done, and I'm not just talking about the graphics. The transition from whimsical to dark is done very well early on, and the way they handle like the plague-sick feeling is excellent. With piles of dead pigs which were put down to try to like drive the rats in one direction, to the corpse-riddled battlefield you have to find your way through. It really sets a dark, grim tone that leaves you feeling stressed and excited to move forward. I think my only real complaint was Hugo. As MacGuffins go, he's rather annoying. While the mechanics around him are fun and well done, I personally hate children in my story. And in the story is where Hugo is really annoying. Children never understand. They do stupid stuff for dumb reasons. And while I won't get into the details because of spoilers, let's just say him having your generic child goes and makes stupid decisions because he misses mummy and runs away more than once, being the reason the story progresses the way it does, was incredibly frustrating. I want to see mummy. mummy is dead, Hugo. Now, I know this is just how children are, so it's like some sort of accurate representation, and that's why, you know, I just prefer them to not be there. But, you know, I accept it's in the game, it's there, and that's just how it's going to be. Much like a bad child actor in an otherwise good movie. That said, that's my one complaint. And if you can't tell yet, 
I honestly really enjoyed the game. Excellent visuals that both delight and disturb, pretty great storytelling if you ignore the generic MacGuffin plotline, a great mix of stress and relief that leaves you feeling excited every time you make it past an area, and fun but not hard puzzles that make you think without feeling stumped all comes together to make a fantastic experience that I really didn't expect. So I give A Plague Tale Innocence a solid recommend. I really hope that they make another one.